Hello, this is Wendy from the Medina Library and welcome back to the writing tips series of recorded programs. This segment is on writing a book blurb. Writing a book blurb can be done on the front end or the back end of the writing process. If you've already finished a story, creating a blurb can help you get a handle on the key elements of your narrative. Or if you're starting a new story, it can help you create a big picture map that will keep you on track as you work. So what is a blurb? A book blurb is a short description of the book's main character and conflict, usually between 100 and 200 words, that traditionally is included on the inside cover or the back of a book, as well as on online retail sites like Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I'd add that blurbs typically end on a hook that makes the readers want to know more. So why write one? First of all, for yourself, a blurb can be your North Star, keeping you on track as you write. Creating one also ensures that you know what your story is about, and having one allows you to share the story with others in a concise and intriguing way. And because second of all, a blurb isn't just for you, it's also for other people. A blurb will be part of your query letter if you're seeking representation from a literary agent if you're hoping to be traditionally published. Once signed, an agent might use it to pitch your book to editors. And if an editor likes your story, they may use some version of your blurb to convince the publisher to buy your book. Most importantly, your book blurb is for readers. Whether traditionally published or self-published, a blurb is how you entice readers. If your cover has caught a potential reader's attention, the blurb is what will seal the deal. So what are the parts of a blurb? The first part is to set the stage by orienting readers to the story through introducing the hero, the setting, and the current situation, basically setting up the context of your story. In part two, we'll introduce a problem. Let's start with the hero, also known as the protagonist or the main character. What's their profession or life role? What makes them interesting? Think about a strong adjective or two to describe your main character. Here are a few examples from some published books. Reclusive Hollywood icon, Evelyn Hugo, is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. This is from the blurb for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. The description uses power words like reclusive, Hollywood icon, and scandalous to describe the main character and catch people's interest. My disease is as rare as it is famous, Basically, I'm allergic to the world. I don't leave my house, have not left my house in 17 years. From Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. This one is unusual because it's in the first person and blurbs are more often in third person, even if the story is in first person, but it works well. And one more. It is the summer of 1950, and at the once grand mansion of Buckshaw, young Flavia de Luce, an aspiring chemist with a passion for poison, is intrigued by a series of inexplicable events. This is how the 11-year-old main character in Alan Bradley's novel, The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie, is introduced. The fact that the main character is young and also an aspiring chemist with a passion for poison is intriguing. The second part of setting the stage is revealing the setting. What's the story's location? What season is it? If the story is historical, what's the time period? What's the world like? Here's part of the blurb from George R.R. Martin's Game of Thrones, where he describes the terrain and the season. Far to the north, beyond the towering wall, lie savage wildlings and worse, unnatural things relegated to myth during the centuries long summer but proving all too real and all too deadly in the turning of the season. And here's a description of the world bounty hunter Stephanie Plum inhabits that makes Trenton, New Jersey come alive from author Janet Ivanovich. Stephanie is a product of the bird, a blue collar pocket of Trenton where the houses are attached and narrow, cars are American, windows are clean, and God forbid you should be late, dinner is served at six. In historical novels, it's important to immediately make the time period clear. Maisie trained as a nurse and then left for France to serve at the front where she found and lost an important part of herself. 10 years after the armistice in the spring of 1929, Maisie sets out 
on her own as a private investigator. This is from Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. And the last part of setting the stage is revealing the current situation. The current situation gives the reader a glimpse of the hero's life as the story begins. Often all three parts, introducing the hero, the setting, and the current situation overlap. In terms of the current situation, what's the hero's life like as the story opens? Does the hero have any hopes or dreams at the start, ones that are about to be shattered or at least interrupted? Even implied desires can cue the reader in to what's at stake or what's about to change. Here are a couple of examples. Six days ago, astronaut Mark Watney became one of the first people to walk on Mars. Now he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. From The Martian by Andy Weir. True crime aficionado Stevie Bell is set to begin her first year at Ellingham Academy, and she has an ambitious plan. She will solve this cold case. The cold case, by the way, involves the decades-old kidnapping of the wife and child of the school's founder. This is from Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. After laying the groundwork for what the hero's everyday life is like, it's time to introduce the problem. This is sometimes called the catalyst, and it sets up the stakes and hints at the journey the hero and the reader will be going on. It indicates that things are about to change. Here are a few questions to help zero in on the catalyst or problem in your story. What event turns the hero's life upside down? What goal does the hero desperately want to achieve? What opposition stands in the hero's way? What's at stake? Here's an abridged blur version of the blurb from Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. For $1,000, Jude will become the proud owner of a dead man's suit, said to be haunted by a restless spirit. He isn't afraid, but what UPS delivers to his door in a black heart-shaped box is no imaginary or metaphorical ghost. It's the real thing. And suddenly the suit's previous owner is everywhere, waiting with a gleaming razor. The event that turns the main character's life upside down in this blurb is the arrival of a murderous ghost. In another example, meet Don Tillman, a brilliant yet socially inept professor of genetics who's decided it's time he found a wife in the orderly, evidence-based manner with which Don approaches all things he designs the wife project to find his perfect partner. It's a 16-page scientifically valid survey to filter out the drinkers, the smokers, and the late arrivers. The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. And in it, Don has a clear, the main character Don, has a clear goal, and he is going all in on it. When Star, the main character of The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, witnesses the shooting death of her best friend by a police officer, protesters take to the streets in Khalil's name. Some cops and the local drug lord try to intimidate Star and her family. What everyone wants to know is what really went down that night. And the only person alive who can answer that is Star. But what Star does or does not say could upend her community. It could also endanger her life. This blurb showcases both the event that turns the hero's life upside down and the stakes involved for both Star and her community. We've just covered the basic parts of a blurb, the setup of a hero, a setting, and a current situation, along with the introduction of a problem or catalyst. So how do you go about writing your own book blurb? Because different writers prefer different levels of plotting, I pulled three different formulas that provide varying amounts of structure. These can be a good starting place. You'll notice as we go through them that none of the templates gives away the story ending, because who'd want to read a book with no surprises? Instead, each ends with a hook or cliffhanger that leaves the reader wanting to know what happens next. I came across this first one in an online writing class years ago. It's short and sweet and provides just the lightest guidance for those who don't like to be hemmed in when they're writing. A character in a situation has a goal. What obstacle must be overcome to prevent possible catastrophe? The second blurb I saw uh, from Michael Haig, a Hollywood script doctor, and he has talked about this one multiple times. It was also the recommended structure by savvy authors for their online pitch fest, where writers pitch agents and editors virtually using a short blurb. A character 
desperately wants their desire in order to, this is the solution they're seeking, but she or he is prevented by, this would be the obstacle or problem, until she or he would risk something, this would be the cost or risk, to overcome an obstacle. And the third template will make the most sense to those familiar with the save the cat method of plotting. It's mentioned in the book, Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. What I like about this one is that it includes some transition words that show how to get from one element of your blurb to the next. Phrases like on the verge or but when, she or he must, before they leave the reader wanting to know what's going to happen next and tie the pieces of the blurb together. So keeping these types of phrases in mind can be helpful, even if you use a different template from this one. Let's look at the template now. On the verge of a stasis equals death moment, this is the setup, a flawed hero, the main character, breaks into act two. This is a catalyst or where the hero enters the new world. But when the midpoint happens, this would be where the problem or conflict comes in, she or he must learn the theme, the universal life lesson, before all is lost. This is the stakes of the story. An explanation of stasis equals death and also entering a new world might be helpful here. The stasis equals death bit refers to something in the blurb that tells the reader the hero's life is going nowhere at the start of the story and just can't stay the same much longer. Entering a new world means the hero's life changes. In a romance, for example, the stasis world could be a jilted groom who enters a new world when he meets someone new. Or the hero could enter a new world by literally traveling to a different country, starting at a new school, or stepping through a portal in time. The stasis world could also be a washed up private eye, for example, who enters a new world when she takes a dangerous case. Basically, the stasis world and the new world are used to create a delineation in the hero's life of before and after. This template also includes a place for the theme. While theme isn't always overtly part of the blurb, it's generally a powerful underlying component. And we'll talk more about theme in a bit. Now let's use these formulas to analyze a few book blurbs from published novels. Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. This blurb comes in at 128 words. R is having a no life crisis. He is a zombie, our flawed hero. He has no memories, no identity and no pulse but he's a little different from his fellow dead. He may occasionally eat people, but he'd rather be riding abandoned airport escalators, listening to Sinatra in the cozy 747 he calls home, or collecting souvenirs from the ruins of civilization. This is the setup and current situation. It's the setup of ours current situation or his ordinary life. It's also a great example of stasis, of a hero needing change. And then he meets a girl. This is the catalyst where the main character enters a new world. Things are about to change. First as his captive and then his reluctant house guest, the conflict, Julie is a blast of living color in R's gray landscape and something inside him begins to bloom. He doesn't want to eat this girl, although she looks delicious, he wants to protect her. Here's the theme. This story is going to be about what it means to be human and alive but their unlikely bond will cause ripples they can't imagine and their hopeless world won't change without a fight. This is the problem or stakes. It hints at a dark moment in the future and also at the larger stakes involving their hopeless world. The Lincoln Lawyer by Michael Connolly comes in at 111 words in the blurb. For defense attorney, Mickey Haller, the clock is always running. With two ex-wives, four Lincoln town cars that he uses as offices, and dozens of guilty clients, he can't afford to miss a trick. This is our flawed hero. When he gets picked by a Beverly Hills rich boy arrested for assault, Mickey sees a franchise case, a nice, long, expensive trial with maximum billable hours. Here's the current situation or setup, and it's of a lawyer always on the hustle. The setting is Beverly Hills. Until the case hurdles him into the last place he wants to be. So the case becomes the catalyst that pushes the hero into a new world. Suddenly, hustling, cynical Mickey Haller is confronted with pure evil and someone who may be truly innocent. Here's the conflict or problem. Now for a lawyer who's always gone for the easy score, the theme. Mickey is a hustler. He's not overly concerned with ethics. So his journey is likely going to be about justice. And sure enough, in the last sentence, getting justice means taking the deadliest risk of all. 
So here we have mistakes. The deadliest risk of all implies that Nikki's life will be on the line. And lastly, the book, This Is Where I Leave You, Jonathan Tropper. At 90 words, this blurb is doing a lot of heavy lifting in a small amount of page space. The death of Judd Foxman's father marks the first time the entire Foxman clan has congregated in years. The situation and setup and hero are all in here. Judd is the hero and he's just lost his father. There is, however, one conspicuous absence, Judd's wife, Jen, whose affair with his radio shock jock boss has recently become painfully public. Simultaneously mourning the demise of his father and his marriage, Judd joins his family as they reluctantly sit Shiva and spend seven days and nights under the same roof. Here's the setting and entering the new world. The setting will be the family home, and this will also be the world that the characters um, enter as they leave their regular lives and instead stay in the same home together for seven days. As long-standing grudges resurface, secrets are revealed, and old passions are reawakened. Conflict and problem here. Then Jen arrives with news of her own. She's pregnant. The stakes have been raised. This is Where I Leave You is a riotously funny, emotionally raw novel about love, marriage, divorce, family, and the ties that bind, whether we like it or not. Theme. In this one, the theme is more explicitly stated. This story is about family dynamics. Let's talk about theme a little bit more. Theme is an effective way to clue readers into what your story is truly about. It's the heart of the story. Theme isn't what the hero does, but what the hero learns. There are some overarching themes that are often found in different genres of fiction. Maybe something on this list might spark some ideas about your own story. In mystery and suspense novels, they are often about chaos versus order or the pursuit of justice. In romance, themes of love conquers all or two halves make a whole are common. For science fiction, humanity's place in the universe is often explored. Fantasy stories tend to be about epic battles between good and evil. In inspirational fiction, themes of faith will overcome all obstacles, or God has a plan, are common. In westerns, standing tall in a hostile or lawless world is often featured. For horror stories, facing our worst nightmares, or sometimes pain for our sins, is a theme. Women's fiction often deals with the burdens and wisdoms of middle age. In the book, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, Jessica Brody talks about theme being the universal life lesson the hero needs to learn in order to grow. Each of these themes can be approached from a variety of angles so that two stories exploring, say, trust might look very different depending on the angle you come at it from. So let's look at a few of these universal life lessons. Forgiveness, it could be for self or for others. Love could be approached from the aspect of self-love, family love, romantic love. Acceptance is a common theme, but it could be about accepting one's oneself or one's circumstances or reality in general. Fear, what about overcoming it or possibly conquering it or maybe finding courage? Trust can be about trust in oneself or in others or in the unknown. Responsibility could be a theme involving duty or standing for a cause or accepting one's destiny. We've covered a lot here, but it probably won't be that useful until you test it out for yourself. In just a moment, I'll put the three blurb templates back on the screen so that you can simply pause the video to review them. Take a few minutes to pick your favorite and sketch a description of a story you're working on or make up something you have no intention of writing just to get a feel for the moving parts of the blurb or create a blurb for a novel you've just read or even a movie or TV show you've recently watched. No editing is necessary at this point. Messy is fine when you're drafting. Here are the blurb templates again. You can use any of them to practice writing a tight, intriguing story description. Happy writing.